Now, uh, my uh, Jabra uh, speaker box says recording is in progress. We're going to give you all a moment to agree to that. And uh, then, without further ado, I uh, bid you all good morning and hand you over to our first speaker who will introduce himself as is our custom. You're on Klaus. Okay. Did I share successfully? I can see your screen quite successfully. If you are not okay. speaking, please mute. If you are not muted, please speak. No, I don't think I'm, where is, where the heck is the mute? Ah, okay. Okay, everything is fine. Oops. So today I will be talking about microcore applications. Um, various people in the past already ask uh, what types of projects I have been doing with it and I didn't quite remember and I sat down and went through my uh, computer and there are quite a number of projects uh, that I can talk about. And here is the list of the most important ones. There may be five additional ones that have to do with uh, ad hoc boards for testing and, and so on. So, um, Geolon MCS, an offshore seismic data logger, uh, then uh, for the same data logger, an ultra wide dynamic range seismic ADC that covers a range of 150 dB. Uh, then the SUGAR project, which is was a research project uh, for a deep toed streamer that is capable of sampling at four kilo samples per second in order, for instance, to detect shallow uh, um, oh, the, 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 the conglomerate of methane and water. Um, I, I cannot think of the proper name right now. Um, then COPS, which stands for Korean Ocean Bottom uh, Seismometer. Um, it is a tsunami detector on a fiber optic cable. Uh, CCD, CCD1, which uh, was quite a challenge uh, electronic wise, a 250 amp uh, current source at a precision of 10 ppm. And last, uh, the Merlin a satellite project and uh, the controller for the laser reference unit. In green, you see the types of FPGAs I have been using in all these projects. Okay, Geolon MCS. So this has been a workhorse for the uh, offshore geophysicists to record um, not only a, a three, uh, the X, Y, the geophone signals or seismometer signals, but also a hydrophone components. So this is different from the land seismic people. The offshore people always need four channels and the land seismic people just have can do with three channels. So the, the picture you see how it looks from outside. Um, and, and this instrument then eventually will go into a pressure vessel, which is good for 6,000 meter water depths, uh, plus uh, all kinds of stuff around it, such that the system can be deployed to the ocean bottom and later on received uh, by triggering it with a sound signal. And the sound signal will release an anchor and then the whole system will come back again. Um, also on the right side, you see a little bit of force code. And that is just an example. Uh, first thing, the MCS is the first project where I used uh, microcore successfully, I must say. 
And the encode uh, code here, oops, the encode code here, um, that has to do with a simple form of data compression. I do delta modulation and then at, I look at the delta signal and decide whether it will fit into a byte, whether it will fit into a 16-bit word or a 24-bit word or whether I need to transfer the absolute value in 32 bits. Um, in high level, as you can see, this takes a lot of time and that has to be done for every sample on every channel. Um, so that was quickly uh, became a bottleneck. And so I realized um, a number of uh, functions as single cycle instructions, namely the uh, store eight bits into a buffer, store 16 bits into a buffer, 24, 32 bits, and uh, the delta function, which does is a comparison and where the um, delta value fits uh, in. And in order to differentiate uh, which size the stored sample needs, I use the carry and overflow bits. And depending on the setting, um, I, I do different things. And you can see uh, how simple ENCODE became after uh, these additional instructions. And uh, even better, um, the single cycle instructions reduces the computational overhead to 25% compared to the previous version. And that allowed the instrument to sample the four channels at 500 samples per second at a quite reasonable power consumption. Um, this project has been realized in 2006, I believe. And at the time, the XCF02SV something um, was quite an old part, but uh, the point is that at that time, the newer parts all had a dramatically increased static power consumption. And since on the mission, the system will be powered from batteries, this was a no-go and I had to revert back to older FPGAs uh, with a better um, static uh, power consumption. So that was the entry into the world of uh, microcore for myself uh, in real projects, in real products. Um, the next board was an interesting deviation because if a seismic recorder is used in, somebody has uh, is not muted and makes a lot of noise somewhere. Um, if it is used in active seismic, like in uh, gas and oil exploration, the needed dynamic range is well above 24 bits, which is the best you can get out of A to Ds. And so we had been thinking about a method of how a dynamic range of 150 dB can be realized. And uh, there are two pictures where you see what we did. So on every signal source, we put two ADC converters. The first converter is an 18-bit converter that kind of converts the very soft signals. And you see this in this region here. At the beginning, you see very small steps. And if, if the dynamic grows higher, then we fall, we, we, um, we will clip the signal for the 18-bit A to D converter and that come, and then comes in the second channel that is connected to the same signal source that is a 16-bit converter 
with less, much less pre-amplification than, than the sensitive channel. And this way we are able to cover a range of 150 dBs. And in this picture, you see what happens. For soft signals, you get a very fine resolution. For uh, very high input signals, you get uh, a coarse signal resolution. And that is fine. That is uh, fine for the geophysicists who want to analyze the signals. Uh, so this was done with uh, vertex part, the XC2V250. And uh, luckily enough, the whole, de the whole design uh, did barely fit into the vertex part, but it did fit. The next project was uh, called SUGAR. I don't even know what the uh, acronym stands for, but basically it is a deep toad streamer, which is a total system. So on the right side, you see uh, uh, the streamer nodes uh, connected with, interconnected with cables. And this string of, I think it was up to 50 uh, streamer nodes was connected to this uh, ocean bottom or let's say subsea uh, electronic package. And in this part, you see an, a, a, a small PC, which is this guy and a board that interconnects to the streamer electronics that delivers uh, the 50 seismic signals over a, uh, over a two wire cable. And besides uh, a hydrophone on every node, there is also a compass that is updated uh, less frequently, maybe once a once every 100 milliseconds or so, uh, and a pressure sensor. So with the, with the compass, you know the direction of the node, of the streamer node, and with the, um, with the pressure sensor, you know how deep it is immersed in water. And so then uh, from this point on, on this side go cables and uh, this pressure box, uh, I mean, you don't see the cylinder, you only see the front plate and the electronics inside, um, is a seven kilometer long tow cable that uh, ends up on the boat. And on the boat, then there is a, a top station that does all the evaluation of the signals. Since the existing tow cable is a coatial cable, and uh, that is the case on most of Germany's research uh, vessel fleet, because they, these boats are quite old from the pre-fiber optic age. Um, the bandwidth is not sufficient to transfer the signals of all the streamer nodes. And therefore there is a, a big uh, local um, uh, uh, storage and only selected channels are sent to the boat uh, in real time. And uh, the microcore in, in that uh, project was uh, present in uh, this board that, oops, which is the receiving side of the streamer, uh, of the toad streamer. The next project is COPS, the Korean Ocean Bottom Seismometer. Um, well, the most interesting thing about this project is the reason why this was started uh, in Korea for the first, for the in, in the first place. And uh, this occurred to me at a very late day because um, uh, let's first talk about this picture down there. You see the setup. 
There is a meteorological station on an island off the east coast of Korea. And as far as the streamer is concerned, it has a current source that uh, that drives uh, the electronics in the ocean bottom unit. Here you see a big a picture uh, while still on board. And here you see a picture uh, of the electronics on the seafloor, which is at a depth of 2,200 meters. And uh, this, is a, this is a tabulation of all the uh, power drops uh, that occur in this setup. Um, the current source drives the electronics at 460 milliamps. And then there is a five kilometer land cable to a beach hole uh, near the shore. Uh, from there, uh, and that is also the anchor of the fiber optic subsea cable, um, which is 20 kilometers long. And then comes the electronics, which, which needs 12.7 volts at 460 milliamps. And since the fiber optic cable only has one conductor, the way back, uh, the current way back has to go through the water. So there is an electrode on the OBU, which is uh, this uh, brass rod here. And then on the beach, uh, there is also another electrode, which is the anode in this case, um, because the anode uh, is a potential troublemaker because uh, usually it will disintegrate. And but that is a completely different story of how we solve the problem. Um, yeah, so that is basically uh, the setup. Um, the interesting part for myself was uh, to be on board uh, a cable laying ship, which was hired for uh, roughly 10 days. And on the seventh day or so after the OBS, OBU had been successfully launched, then all the work came to a halt and all of a sudden, uh, several journalists and scientists uh, entered the vessel and had had a, a full, let's call it an information day. And in the evening, there was a five minute film on the Korean uh, evening news. And then it became clear to me, this was the only reason why this whole project was started in the first place because after the big tsunami in Indonesia, the Korean uh, population uh, became um, um, fearful. And so politicians uh, uh, decreed that by the end of the year, there will be the first uh, tsunami warning station I'm immersed in the sea. And uh, finally, we got the contract and we had to realize the entire uh, system in six months, which we were able to do. Uh, the next project is uh, CCD1. I have, again, no idea what the acronym stands for, but basically it is a 250 amp, 100 volt, uh, current source for a proton cyclotron in Germany in order to drive the so-called bumper magnets. The bumper magnets are needed in order to refresh the protons in the cyclotron uh, ring um, about every second. And uh, after, after every second, the beam has to deviate from its normal course and go through some uh, materials that will create additional protons in the beam. And so the requirements are quite high, 10 p.m. precision for static currents, uh, 
I mean, if you look at the current sensitivity of op, of op amps, uh, it is impossible to reach this goal unless the electronics themselves are running at a constant temperature. And uh, we did this by putting two layers into the, or by using two layers of a six layer board. Uh, these layers were a hundred micrometer thick, which is quite a lot. And they were just heated at, to a constant temperature. So they would heat the other after a while, uh, maybe after an hour or so. Uh, the entire board would be heated to 52 degrees and that way the 10 ppm could be reached. And uh, the, the, unfortunately, I don't have any photos of the uh, entire uh, power supply or even of the board. So the only thing I could find is the slope that uh, the current signal has to go through if uh, uh, new protons have to be created. And so there is a still steep increase uh, than a pedestal for uh, a while, about 20 milliseconds. And then there must be an ultra precise uh, uh, falling slope uh, at the end. But uh, this is not the only thing that the board needed to do. Uh, it had uh, several DACs and ADCs and uh, also a very high precision 24-bit uh, ADC in order to calibrate the system and the static currents as part of the uh, boot procedure of the board. The next project is, and this is the last one I want to talk about, is the Merlin Fru. Um, here for the first time, I have been using uh, the uh, micro semi FPGAs that have MOS transistors as the switching element in the FPGA itself. And, therefore, and these uh, MOS transistors are radiation safe as far as the orbit is concerned, where the Merlin satellite is supposed to go, uh, namely 400 kilometer. And in the left picture, you see the measure principle. So here we have the uh, satellite and the, its flight trajectory. And there is a laser beam directed towards the uh, Earth's surface and um, the laser, there will be two laser shots in close every, I think there are 20 shots a second and there will be two shots, 200 microseconds apart from each other called lambda on and lambda off. Now, what does this mean? Uh, if you look at the absorption spectrum of methane, uh, then you see that it has a very distinct uh, absorption dip that is shown here. And uh, this absorption curve is unique for methane and no other element in the atmosphere has the same absorption curve. So the measurement goes like this. The first, the lambda off uh, laser shot is at the right spot of this slope. And then 200 microseconds later uh, in the lambda off uh, signal will be sent which is 10 gigahertz apart from uh, this absorption dip. And then the backscattered signal is received by the satellite and by comparing the energy of the lambda on and the lambda off, uh, the backscattered energy of lambda on and lambda off, if you compare them, then you have a direct uh, relation to the methane content in the atmosphere. Um, 
the part that I have been doing there is the so-called um, frequency reference unit, because these laser frequencies, the lambda on and lambda off, have to be very precise. Uh, the precision is five megahertz. And uh, this requires uh, quite a bit of uh, control to do that. And uh, the, the way it operates is this here is the frequency reference unit and the re frequency reference unit synchronizes uh, a classical um, energy laser uh, setup. And uh, so here in the frequency reference unit, we have four uh, laser diodes. Uh, one is for, uh, as, as a spare, should one fail. Uh, and the three laser uh, diodes that are used during operation are one laser diode is producing the lambda on frequency. Another one is producing the lambda off frequency. And the third laser unit is doing several things amongst others. It goes through an absolute uh, frequency reference, which is a tube filled with methane. And the uh, energy is measured in front of the tube and behind the tube. And so uh, by scanning the frequency, you will be able to see uh, this uh, absorption curve uh, developing. And so this constitutes an absolute uh, frequency reference. And then there is also a relative wave meter on board. So uh, starting from the absolute frequency reference, um, we can develop and measure other frequencies that are close to this. And namely the lambda on is not on the very uh, trough of the peak uh, of, of, of this absorption, absorption curve, but it is a little bit uh, to one side. And this little bit is determined using the wave meter, also the 10 gigahertz lambda off, uh, frequency difference is also uh, established by using the wave meter. Okay, uh, that's it. Those are the uh, um, beta uh, project I have been doing uh, for uh, using microcore. Okay, any questions? Really interesting projects. Okay, well, thank you for listening and let's move on to the next one. And I have been absolutely on time, unusual. We're grateful for your content, especially when you go over. Uh, thank you, Klaus. <clears throat> uh, some of your uh, uh, past talks, you mentioned the possibility when I asked of, of giving one board to one guy. Uh, Steven is here and he wants to uh, consider the possibility of making them available to multiple people. Klaus is willing to send a batch, but uh, he only wants to do this once. Uh, I'm thinking uh, it will be better to accept Klaus's offer of having a, a modern currently available board, uh, development board or try, uh, try out FPGA board uh, to, uh, to have Klaus go and uh, implement it. Uh, but first, uh, we're going to make an effort to
find out who wants this. If there's no demand, there's no sense uh, Klaus doing any of it. Uh, so uh, any of you currently connected, uh, interested in having a current, currently available board, would you buy a board and, uh, and run uh, Klaus's uh, core on it? Um, this is Steven. I, I'm planning on doing that if nobody else does. So, I mean, one of the reasons why I volunteered for this is because I thought I would really like to have a board and have Klaus's kernel running on it. Yeah, I mean, Stephen, if, if you are going to use it, then I'm going to donate one to you. It's that simple. The only thing I would like to know is what uh, I, of course, have to send it with a pro forma invoice. And I know that there is a minimum value which will not be checked by customs. So uh, in the pro forma invoice, I can just set in this minimum value, which will not create hassles. But I have to know what the minimum value is. That is acceptable. That minimum value is $100. Ah, $100. Okay, that's so that's that is plenty. Maximum value that you, that's, uh, that's the maximum value that you can, I think it's a maximum. If you, if the value is more than a hundred, then I think that you have to go through all kinds of hassles, to, uh, as well as you get to claim it for customs, right? Okay, so that is easy. I can then just uh, send a pro forma inverse uh, of thirty dollars, and then that should go through. All right, so Stephen will arrange to get the one board that class will send uh, offline. And uh, we're going to ah, yeah. on Stephen, Stephen, what I do have to know is, uh, so the boards, the pure boards, uh, they need a little bit of soldering work because you have to connect a connector for the theory, umbilical line um yeah that's about it that is needed and everything you should be able else. to do that okay so you can do this yourself yeah okay great so then all i need is your mailing address all right you guys can do that offline uh how do we want to proceed with the uh the project to identify a modern board uh i'd like to get some mode of interest that somebody uh, will do it. I'd like to say that I I will do uh, do one by a board and uh, and implement it, but uh, it won't be anytime soon. I don't have a lot of uh, of free time to be doing that. Uh, and so what what I propose is. Uh, contacting folks. Uh, Klaus, did you say you're going to contact the, the Peter Forth uh, Facebook group and, and ask them if anybody is interested in? in yes, I, I will. I mean, <laughs> the way I see it, I will have to spend my one day on the internet and, and search for various boards uh, and, and find, find a... Um, a, a, a nice one. When the nice thing about the board I'm using right now, there is hardly anything on it but the FPGA and the power supply. And lots of free pins that are not used for anything. So you can put your own stuff on it. And most of the prototyping boards I need are full of uh, peripheral chips. Uh, that occupy the FPGA pin, so you cannot really do your own projects with it. So that is what I'm looking for, for something very simple. Uh, a basic, basically. Okay. Is anyone else going to step up and say, I'll, I'll buy the board that Klaus identifies and uh, implement the, uh, the core on it? 
Okay. So I'll I'll distribute this to the. I I think Klaus, the best thing to do is wait till you get at least two or three people willing to do it before you put the effort into checking what's available and identifying it and implementing it. Does that seem reasonable to you? Yeah, but I may look at it anyway. So uh, I, I can't stop you. <laughs> before before you. long, before long, uh, there will be people who want to who who will be looking for something like All that. All right. So I'm hoping that Brad will uh, put this part on the uh, recording. Uh, people can contact me uh, either at uh, Forther at comcast.net that's dot net not dot com uh or through meetup messaging uh it's interesting i saw a meetup message asking for the ftp if the content from the fourth dimensions ftp site i don't know if uh if there was such a, a site i uh i'm not familiar with it uh so uh other places to uh so i'll put an announcement on meetup as well as our uh svfig email list uh how do we feel about comp.lang.forth does anybody uh do that anymore And the silence is deafening. So let's assume that uh, nobody is interested in comp.lang.forth. I I used to read it every once in a while, and you know it it was so I, I such a waste of time. How's that? Uh, they probably feel the same way about me. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, so let's table that. If somebody uh, wants to propose this on comp.lang.forth and see if anybody's interested, they're welcome to do that. Uh, so anybody else have any other ideas for soliciting folks that are interested in having a go at this? Okay, great. Uh, At this point, uh, Bill isn't here, but we do have a video from him. So let's see here. Let's go down the list of. So at this time, I'm going to run the uh, the video, and uh, then we'll. Uh, go to any other uh i assume you all saw the challenge on the uh meetup agenda uh at the beginning of the month and have all prepared uh good good code to satisfy it uh but uh we'll we'll see that when we uh when we see it now i have to find my share screen button here it is, and I am going to share that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to optimize for video clip. Okay, so far so good. And I have to select a window. So what we're going to need to do is make a window with the video in it. Oh, to do, to do, to do, to do. <laughs> All right. Uh. 
this is great. Uh, Okay. In this pause, I might as well mention that I've got a uh, a very APL-ish uh, answer to. Cool. I can't find this the window that's got the video in it. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> 